Before we look at how we can represent images and sound in a computer, it's important to look, or I guess take a step back really, and think about what is going on when we are doing this. Really, we're going between analog and digital signals and converting to analog and digital data. So let's talk about this in this video now. First of all, an analog signal is a signal, a signal being this sort of um, just a, a way of uh, conveying information. These signals are constantly changing and don't have defined ranges. So here is a picture of an analog signal. It's they're usually represented as a wave because this continuous nature means we haven't got gaps. It's a nice smooth wave, both on the y-axis and on the x-axis. The x-axis for, for a wave is always time. The y-axis doesn't matter so much. It can be quite a few different things, but here we've got voltage. And so this wave here is really smooth. We've got this continuous nature, um, but also, on our y-axis, we don't know our scale here, but there wouldn't be a set range of values for an analog signal. It could be massive, it could be tiny. There are really infinite number of values we can have for this signal. Incidentally, you might have seen analog spelled differently. The UE is silent at the end of analog, and so the Americans leave it off. It doesn't matter how you spell it, they are the same concept. And we contrast these continuous undefined uh, signals with digital signals, which are discrete. So a discrete signal means they have this set range and we can have gaps in our signal. But what's really important is a digital signal can take, can only take values within a certain range. So there's not an infinite number of values that a digital signal can take, which is different to an analog signal. And this is relevant to us as computer scientists because inputs and outputs to a computer are often analog, not always, but often. But in a computer, as we looked at so far, all processing is done with digital data, namely in binary. We need to have all data converted to binary to be able to do anything with it. And so you must convert it from analog to digital to use it in a computer. So there is a distinction between a signal and data. So the data is just a way of representing the signal. And analog data is naturally occurring sorry, analog signals are naturally occurring. And so if we are wanting to represent it as data, it's got to be in a physical form. It can't be done in a computer because a computer just cannot fathom how it can represent these infinite values. So for example, this is a record, a vinyl record, which you may have never come across. I am not old enough to have bought a vinyl record myself. And they are interesting though, I think, because they are analog devices. So they work by having a groove and the record player will run around this groove and in doing it will create the sound. So the data has been stored just as a groove but it is representing the original analog signal. And this contrasts with digital data which has this limited range of values which can be stored on a computer. So for instance a CD really replaced a vinyl record but it's digital. The way it works is this analog wave is being sampled and these samples are being stored in binary and encoded on the disk either with chemicals or bumps or some digital format. And so to go from an analog signal to digital data, which is really important for a computer, we need to use an ADC, an analog to digital converter, which is a device. Don't need to know how it works necessarily, but for sound, we'll talk about how we can sample in a future video. But a microphone, for example, will have an ADC as part of it, because like right now I'm speaking to a microphone, my voice is analog. I could be infinitely loud or infinitely quiet, and my microphone is using ADC to convert that analog sound into digital data which my computer can save. The sound is definitely not the only example of an analog signal. It's often taught as if it is, but it's not. It's just a nice example to use. So for instance, a sensor, an analog sensor will use an ADC as well. It'll work differently to a microphone ADC, of course, but it will still be converting to digital. So for instance, a light sensor, is taking in that electromagnetic radiation, which is analog, and converting it to some binary format. Another sensor, motion sensor, which you'll see in a school toilet often, which will sometimes work as well. That's converting, it's got a few different methods, but that's again converting movement, which is analog into digital. And a digital camera sensor is another example. In our surroundings, we've got an infinite number of colors, possible colors, and so it needs to convert these into a discrete range of digital values. But we do sometimes need to do the opposite process going from digital to analog, shortened to, well, using a DAC, a digital to analog converter. And this is most commonly used inside a speaker, right? You're listening to me talk somehow now, and your device 
is using a DAC to convert that digital format in the video file to an analog signal which you can hear through your ears. What it's doing is, like I say, converting these binary values to analog signals. So as we go through the next few videos, bear this in mind, we're going often from analog to digital. It needs to be in binary, but we have got trade-offs in the analog is our original format, and we do sometimes lose quality in converting it to digital because we can't have all of those original values in a computer.